Well, I got to see some of the show. It's fantastic. So congratulations off the bat. Thank you. Very excited for people to see it. You know, these are iconic um, characters that we've seen iterations of their lives several times in media. What drew you to this version and telling the story in this way? Well, I think it was the the opportunity to frankly tell tell both the story, you know, Martin and Malcolm, you know, because, you know, there, there's clearly been a lot of pieces done about them individually and to have the opportunity to tell it during within the same piece and not only to tell it, you know, in, in a TV form, but do it over eight hours. I, I think for us that that was something that was very attractive and appealing. And as you know, sh you know, creators, anytime you have that type of terrain, to tell a story about these two icons, not only two icons, but also the, the wives, Betty and Coretta. You know, it, it's something that was extremely appealing and, and humbling uh, in Endeavor as well. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you mentioned Betty and Coretta because one of the things that stuck out to me was this idea that they had agency and they were contrib con con contributors to this movement and not just people taking a back seat. Um, what was the process like for deciding to include that vantage point of, of this narrative that we think we know? Yeah, no, it starts with the with the idea that, you know, with with eight hours, we don't just have to talk about an event. We got mm -hmm. to tell the origin stories for everybody. Um, and so that we could get a little bit of an insight into the decisions that they made, why they made them. Um, and so it was extremely important for us from the minute that the Bythewoods were, uh, Gina and Reggie Bythewood were attached to this to the moment that we came on, that if we can't tell the story about all four of our top leads, uh, then it wouldn't be worth it uh, because there is no Martin and Malcolm without Betty and Coretta. Uh, mm. And they are civil rights icons in their own right. And that had to be explored for this to be as rich and as uh, as powerful as a project as we hope it will be. Uh, and so we, we were extremely excited about trying to take on that that opportunity and 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 doing as much research as we could to learn about who they were as people and not just uh how we've seen them uh in our history books that we they're they're an afterthought to be to be considered they are powerful strong 360 degree uh characters who who went through as much if not more than Martin and Malcolm did during those years uh and deserve the right to have their stories told as as best as we could in in this particular project how does your approach, or does it differ, when you approach characters that are fictionalized or created by someone versus people based off of real people that lived and, and breathed and were walking this earth? Well, I, I think you gotta, you know, do do as the due diligence in, in trying to, you know, learn as much about them first and foremost. I think anytime you have like a fictional uh, character, like say Damien and I create, you know, you have that room to kind of go wherever you want to uh, take take the character but when you have you know real human beings like martin and malcolm betty and coretta you know you have to at least try to get it as close to right as you possibly can and so that 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 entails you know a, a lot of you know research talking to people who were you know who may have known them or who have even more of a historical knowledge than say we may have uh uh on, on all four of them so i think that's that's part of the main difference just being ferocious within finding as much intel as you can yeah, it was important for us to start with what we didn't know. Um, and what we didn't know, you could fill this room. But also, <laughs> that was the interesting part for the audience to then learn like we did. So yeah. you start with the moments that everybody knows, um, but learning little tidbits like that Martin and Malcolm both loved ice cream. is fun, and it, it connects us to them. And so we started with what we didn't know and helped that drive us into them as characters, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. And... and that's how we approach uh, the, pr the perspective of bringing them to light. So you have eight hours, but you have a lifetime to cover for four different people. How do you decide which moments of these lives to feature in the show? I mean, if you, I, I don't know, you could give them to give us five more seasons. We'll, we'll do the rest. <laughs> of uh, but yeah, you know, you know, we, we were driven, we weren't driven by a, a specific timeline. You know, we weren't going to do 1962 and, 68, we were driven by the thematic connection that they had as people. And mm. so we struggled with the what we could put in and what we couldn't, what we needed to touch and what we didn't need to touch. Um, and we would love to have more time to do so or uh, to put that in. But what we did choose to, to put in 
we felt like gave us the best insight into these particular versions of Martin and Malcolm that we were trying to tell, um, and Betty and Coretta, about where they were at this particular moment in time. And that's based on the historical research that we did and, and using our incredible consultants to to, to, to get insight into their, to their points of view uh, so that we could come to understand those iconic moments you're referring to from a different light. Trust, trust us. They, they, yeah. their, their, their journey and their, their life, you know, it, it eight hours isn't even close to enough. To, yeah. To, yeah. You know, you could, you could tell their story over 10 seasons to be, to be frank. So, you know, it, it was, it definitely was challenging to find the right moments to, you know, really explore but, you know, again, we're fortunate, frankly, to where we did have eight hours. So that, that also uh, is, is true as well. Well, I want to start off by saying you've got a great show on your hands. Oh, I you. thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, mm. You know, these iconic men have been covered in media numerous times before. But this one, to me, felt wholly different and very intimate. Was that a very distinct choice in the pre-production process to approach it in that way? You got it, you got ladies it. first. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. We were excited to take this on. But it's interesting because when Nat Geo first came to us, they had asked if we'd like to take on season four Genius and focus on Dr. King. And while we were happy that uh, they wanted to do that, we knew for ourselves that you can't have Dr. King without Malcolm X that they're mm -hmm. really two sides of the same coin and they were equally important to the movement. And gratefully, Nat Geo, Imagine Disney, embraced it immediately and, and heard our vision, saw the vision. And so we got to disrupt this next season and focus on the two of them and how much they paralleled each other, not just in the historical aspects, but also in their personal lives and who they are and their upbringing, what what built them into the geniuses they are. And that was the exciting part to bring their humanity forth. And I think like along with the humanity, you know, that's really where we're able to lean into the intimacy or able to lean into them, not just being these iconic figures, but like these quiet moments, these personal moments, you know, seeing them laugh, um, yeah. seeing them be, you know, human beings. So it was, it was absolutely um, a deliberate part of our process. Mm. Something that you just touched on that I love is the idea of these two men as opposite sides of the same coin. I feel a lot of times they're portrayed as kind of antagonistic with each other. And, you know, obviously they're opposite sides of the same coin, but they really did push the same um, movement forward. Um, you have like dream team behind the scenes in front of the camera what was the process for being able to assemble this team to tell their story? Well, this is the first time where Gene and I had an idea and we didn't either write it or direct it ourselves. And so, you know, we were very fortunate to find two great showrunners and Raphael Jackson and Damian Macedon and really a great executive producer or, or you know, a, a lot of producers, you know, on the ground for us was, was Francie Calpo. Um, but then like our amazing team of directors, you know, uh, Channing Godfrey Peoples and Crystal Robeson. Roberson and a director X and just, uh, and, and by the way, you know, a really dope writing staff. And so I, I think like everybody just rolled up their sleeves to tell this story and really find the humanity behind them. And then our cast, incredible cast, um, mm on the big four, but we needed to find young actors because it was important that we cast um, actors who reflected the youthfulness of these icons. And uh, how do you find people with that level of chops, but also that level of courage to take these roles on? And and we did. These four, our big four, embraced it fully, took on the challenge, had the work ethic to dig deep and not just do an imitation, but really find the humanity, the truthfulness of all four of these characters, these icons, mm. and, and bring a, you know, bring a uh, performance that we're really proud of. Wonderful, yeah. I, uh, another thing that I noticed about the show was bringing these um, usually side characters, the wives, to the forefront, and 
really championing that their contributions to this movement. Um, can you speak on maybe the research of that? Because I feel like that's not those stories aren't necessarily as readily available in media. Well, I mean, we had an amazing think tank where with researchers, you know, we had with scholars and activists. And one of the main things that we we went into this think tank looking to uncover and looking to learn. But we had an objective as well, which is to really uncover what we could about Betty and Coretta, because as as you put it, they they weren't just part of the movement they were champions of the movement mm. and uh so happy in, in an hour five to be able to even dig deeper into their story hey i have one more question for you you are multi-hyphenates you write you produce you direct what's your favorite <laughs> well um proud of all three but i am a director at heart Mm, I love that. Yeah, I think probably, you know, I feel the same way, but I think like my favorite thing is to really, like you come up with an idea, you know, you and you see the idea through and you go to set for the very first time and you see all these trucks and all these crew people and you're like, wow, and you feel really grateful because you're sort of like, wow, like, I thought of this and, and here we are. And that's always just a really amazing and, and, and humbling uh, experience. Mm -hmm. I'd like to start off by saying amazing job. Y'all have a great show on your hands. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Um, great performances by you two and the rest of the cast. What was it like preparing to take on these iconic historical characters and make the performance your own? Nerve-wracking, <laughs> uh, uh, exciting, um, full of doubt, like, can I do this? Should I do this? Mm. Am I the one to do this? Um, a lot. It was a lot um, <clears throat> because there's the desire to, to get it right. Mm -hmm. And then, like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, and coming to a place of discovering that so long as I tell the truth about Betty, then I'm doing it right. Mm -hmm. But then that's also scary because if I if I start to show um, the cracks of her life, does that therefore mean that I am dishonoring her? Mm. And so you have all those thoughts and you have all those questions and you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Because at the end of the day, I think we all we all wanted to um, get rid of, take them out of the black and white photos, mm -hmm. right? Get them from being feeling so removed and get them to feel like people that everybody know mm -hmm. that we've all either had sitting on our couches or played a game of spades with or something. Mm -hmm. like, just get them to feel relatable. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that feels like. I have to sacrifice uh, um, reverence when really that's not true at all. Mm -hmm. um, that in actually telling the full truth about the capacities of these women, that you are honoring them mm -hmm. in the proper way that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, was Do you have anything you'd like to add? <laughs> no, is it? Should I? Should I talk if now? If you want to add. I mean, I'd, I'd love to yeah you said everything i mean it was very nerve-wracking i think a ball of emotions mm. um there was the anxiety there was the fear there was the excitement i mean when do you ever get the opportunity to play women who made such an impact on human history as we know it mm. um so there was that the challenge of rising to it but again all the self-doubt and all those things which are normal human emotions that we all go through but I guess, you know, the more we got to delve into these characters and to research them and to give ourselves our own understanding of them, you know, you start to remember that they are very relatable. You know, they are humans. Mm -hmm. They have complex, you know, situations <clears throat> and they go through all sorts. And so all we can do really is um, 
put our best foot forward. And uh, for me personally, I I know that I could never compare to um, Caressa Scott King. She was a human, you know, who walked this earth and did what, and I'm never going to be her. So all I can do is give my interpretation of her, my understanding of her um, with the most reverence, but also with the most humanity as well, you know, to show the different aspects of her because she was not just a black and white photo. Mm-hmm. You know, she was a fully full woman, a full black woman and, you know, she deserves to have been, you know, to be shown in the fullest and best light possible. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, something that you said that really um, I touched on when I watched the show was that these women are fully realized. And it's almost like giving them a little bit of their voice back because typically when we talk about these stories, it's always focused on the famous husbands, but these women made indelible contributions to this movement. What was it like to be able to bring their stories out from the shadows and into the spotlight? Mm, rewarding, definitely, right? Um, to get the opportunity to correct a narrative, mm. right? To correct this narrative that throughout history, women somehow have evolved into wanting agency now. <laughs> yeah. That was never a thing at any other point in time. Um, And so correcting that narrative is just, for me, it gave me a lot. It gave me a lot of um, encouragement and um, assurance that the ways in which I fight for agency now is not a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That these were women that advocated um, for themselves and for others um, and for us to come after them, right? They've been doing that. so for me, it's very um, rewarding and encouraging to get to delve into that and 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 give them the fullness of the voice that they had. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I love that. I love that so much. Well, thank you guys for speaking with me and taking some time. Congratulations on the show. I'm excited for people to thank see you. It. So much. Thank you.